Okay, so a lot of people use LAC tables for this job, but a LAC table doesn't fit where my printer is, so I decided to make something out of 12 mil MDF. I knocked off a quick design in FreeCAD, went to B&Q, got them to cut these pieces of wood to the size I wanted, and I'm just marking up for the windows. I've got some A3 pieces of Perspex, and and fit those into the side walls and the door just for the look of the thing you don't really need it you might have noticed I'm making a complete mess of marking this up which is why it's important when you're doing something like this to stick to the most important DIY rule Okay, so with it all marked up, it's time to cut out. The inside line is slightly less than A3. I'm going to cut that all the way out. The outside line is A3. And what I'm going to do is just route out 6mm of this MDF. And so that I've got a little ledge to fit the perspex into. You don't need to do it this way. You could quite easily just cut... Um, an A3 cut out and print some brackets to hold the perspex in place but I've got a new router so I wanted to try it out. Rounded corners were a bad idea though, they, they, they look easy on this video but they were really fiddly to cut. Okay, so that's one of them done. It needs a bit of sanding to tidy up those edges but pretty much there. And we've got another two of those, the front and side walls to do. So here we go, just routing out the hole for the perspex to fit into. I don't do a lot of this sort of working, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. It seemed to work. didn't quite fit, just need to give it a tiny bit more off one end and because the router cutter is round it leaves rounded corners so just square those off with a knife. Unfortunately the MDF is quite happy about being trimmed that way. There we go, all fits nicely, I'm just going to give it a bit of a sand, make sure everything's nice and clean and flat. Admittedly, this is quite a lot more work than just buying a, an IKEA table and popping some perspex in the holes. But, you know, making stuff's fun. Everyone should make more stuff. Okay, uh, this was the week of the massive snowfall in the UK and my workshop was freezing, so I decided to do this inside. Being very, very careful not to drill any holes in the kitchen table, of course, and go around with the hoover afterwards and clean up. But it's important to drill pilot holes in MDF because if you push really any any screw into it very far, it will just split. So I'm just making sure that everything's as square and as level as it can be. Because if you make any mistakes with the first join, the next join will be slightly wonkier and the next join will be slightly wonkier and before you know it your door doesn't fit. So pace to take time here and get it right. The first one's trickiest, second one's easier, third one's easier again by the time you get to the end. If with a bit of luck everything's nicely lined up and ready to go. The great bit about having a 3D printer is that I've managed to print loads of uh, various adapters and brackets for my action camera. So you can do exciting camera angles like this. Okay, 
Okay, so there's the top. I'm just marking 6mm from the edges so that I know when I drill these holes I'm going right into the middle of the walls underneath. You would probably eyeball it, but for the sake of drawing a line it's worth getting it right. So there we go, I just pushed the door into place just to make sure it fit. Okay, and it does, it needs a Needs a couple of mil taking off just to make it swing freely, but a couple of minutes with some sandpaper will solve that. So a quick coat of paint. MDF gets a lot of flack, but it's cheap and it's easy to work with, and it takes paint pretty well. I mean, this would look amazing if I'd built it in something like walnut or cherry or spalted maple or something, but it would have cost a fortune and taken ages to do. I can always rebuild this later if I want to, but it's, it's 15 quid's worth of wood and a few bits of electrical bits and pieces. I've just bought a uh, surface mount back box and a double main socket with USB outlets as well. So that'll give me a power socket for the printer, a power socket for the lights, USB for the Raspberry Pi. That's the print server and just mounted that inside, popped the cable outside, I ran that through a, a switch and down to a standard socket. This video isn't sponsored by Ryobi, but if Ryobi fancy sending me some tools, uh, that they are very good tools. Okay, so I'm just routing out somewhere for the hinges to sit because makes the door sit flush when it's closed. It's only a couple of millimetres, but little details make the difference. I didn't get any footage of hanging the door, which is a shame because it was really fiddly. I don't know, sometimes hanging doors just happens and it works, and sometimes it's really fiddly, and this was one of the fiddly times. This, however, was such a fantastic job, peeling all the protective packing off the perspex super satisfying. So I've just got some five minute epoxy just giving a little bit around the edges. It doesn't need much because they, they, they fit quite nicely just with the friction anyway but a bit of glue to hold them in won't go amiss. Not like I'm planning on taking this off-roading or anything it's just gonna sit in the corner Okay, there we go, in situ. Um, it's got a bit of sheet of rubber on the bottom just to help absorb some vibrations. I'm just figuring out where to put a hole for the filament feed. Earlier in the day I'd printed a little funnel to feed the filament through. At some point I'll build a rack on the top for filament reels to sit on. But for the time being, I've just got a little stand printed. There we go. In goes the printer and the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is running OctoPi, and they say that they need more power than the Zero provides, but I found it works fine. There we go. One more thing to do, which is to install the lights. This is just a reel of 12 volt LEDs I bought on eBay. Really fiddly to stick down, so they're a bit wobbly, but it doesn't matter because you don't see them really, they're pointing down from the roof. And that means that it looks like this. It looks a bit harsh here, but it's actually really relaxing, sort of chilled out light. 